Hi, and welcome to the 93rd edition of the Keen Minds podcast. We're covering NBC's The Blacklist. This is season, season 7, episode 9, Orion Relocation Services. I'm Jen, a.k.a. Takata Cycle, And I am Tessa. And following our technical difficulties... We are finally here, and for once, yeah. it's not our computers. It was yeah, NBC. let's talk a little bit about those technical difficulties. I I was not able to watch the first 15 minutes until the episode came back on the app the next day, on the NBC app next day, uh, because it didn't record as part of the blacklist. I have fires, and I'm setting it to record the blacklist, and it should record and no matter what hour it comes or what day it comes, it should record it. And it didn't. And I'm 15 minutes late watching because we were watching something else and it was interesting. We wanted to finish. We get to there and I've lost the first 15 minutes. I don't know what the heck is going on. Well, thankfully, I, I have AT&T U-verse, and it, I, I started in a little late as well just so that I could fast forward through some of the commercials. And it did connect to mine, but I always use, I, I purchase the season on Amazon for rewatches because Amazon, so yeah, Amazon has a fantastic setup for being able to go through with, with titles uh, or no yes, titles, exactly subtitles and being able to zip back and forth. And I've got all my episodes in one place. It's just, I, I really enjoy it. It's, it's my, my go-to for it. It still hasn't shown up. We're recording yep. this at. Three o'clock central, four o'clock uh, Eastern, Eastern, and yeah. it's still not there. And but, so, but I it no didn't. Re- it it I bought. I hadn't bought the season in in um, in fires, which you usually just can buy the season separately from NBC, and usually that way you don't get it without the commercials. But it's on the TV, and that's the way I used to watch it before I got Amazon. But Amazon is more convenient for taking stills and all that. But it was good to have it in two places. And I bought the season and it still does not show up. So it's not Amazon. This is something with NBC's, the way they tag that episode or some technical difficulties they had. It doesn't show up as being the blacklist. This this isn't the first time it's happened with Amazon and I've called them about it. And from what I understand, it is an NBC issue. Because they said, you know, we haven't gotten it. They haven't pushed it to us yet. And yeah. so they're required to wait until it's pushed. Um, now, d- it did show up on the NBC app. And does the app work for you? Because it, the app doesn't work for me anymore. I, I've been trying to watch... Um, it Ryan's, does, but it's I've a been, pain in the ass. Because well, you can nod back and forth. And, and it forget also, about the, the ads. I get the oh. ads. They want you to watch the ads because you've been paid for the ads. Yeah. Okay, no. You cannot even go back fast back and forth within the same segment of of each break well i know that like ryan's new amsterdam that i watch i've been trying to because i haven't i didn't buy that season this year and so i've been trying to watch it on the app when i want to watch it you know on my ipad and it just it comes on but it has no uh no audio and so i wasn't sure if that was across the board and i've tried contacting nbc and they were like oh well, have you tried turning it off and turning it back on? <laughs> kind of. No, it didn't occur to me. And so the only thing I could may, maybe that's a because I was using a really old iPad. I'll try it on a newer one that I just got. But I, I've had a lot of issues with the NBC app, and so I don't know what's going on. It's not maybe a it's, happy one. Maybe it's just not in the budget. Seven seasons in, but come on, we're still here. <laughs> we're your loyal watchers. Yeah. Let us view our show. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was a little concerning for me because I, I you know, I, I, I rely so much on being able to watch and then go back and forth and watch like this segment of things and the other segment I can't watch it. And so for me, it was, it was very, very um, upsetting. So, but that, that said, finally, I watched the first 15 minutes. It was, um, I was very peeved. This is not a, this was not the episode to start in late on because... No. <laughs> I don't know no, how you it was not. I, I finished my first watch of it and went, okay, so which way's up now? Yeah. Uh, during most of it, I I was up saying, I've been wrong about everything. I've been wrong about everything. And then as I, as it was nearing the end, I started to hear actually the 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 words, and I'm like, oh wait a minute, this was made very nicely 
moved on in the way they did those those memories, the same way that they did list memories, sometimes even, even the same words used by, uh, what is the name of the crazy doctor doing this? By the oh, way, he um, was it ex- is. Oh, and Stop by the way, it. it's, it's Michael Severus too, and I love him. He was in Fringe. So you guys have heard me go on my happy rants about Fringe. One of the shows that I love so much. It's, it's to this day, one of my very favorite television shows ever. I, I kind of hope to write a, you know, a comparison piece after the Blacklist wraps of the way they handle a father, son, and chosen family situation with a very, you know, disrupted uh, a character that, that is the father in French and the reflection of that that you see in the blacklist because i think that at least early on several of the writers came over from Mm -hmm. that same writing team so you see a lot of pieces in it but uh michael i think severus is his last name but um he played a character named september in french and i loved him in it he was one of the few that was from beginning to end of the series and so I saw him on IMDb last uh, couple weeks ago, and I was like, who's he playing? I didn't see. I would recognize him. Where is he? And then he came on, on Friday's episode. I went, oh, there you are. <laughs> yep. Once he took the coat off and the hat and the glasses, and then I yeah, recognized that was him. By the, yeah, that scene where he arrived is a nod to, um, to um, Indiana Jones, by the way. And the name of the character is Skovic. There we go. That's yeah, it. so Skovic, you know, it was so so interesting the way they use the same words for Skovic doing that than for Doctor Orchard doing them. Um, that was very very interesting the way they did this. Um, so anyway, this this I think that we do. You have anything to say about any of the other characters that are not our main components this season? There's a little bit about Liz at the end. Yeah, um... Let's just touch on uh, let's touch on on Liz and Red real fast, and then we'll jump in because I think the mythology is going to be the majority. Yeah. I it's been an incredibly busy weekend for me, and I'm I, I'm worried my voice is going to give halfway through this because I'm having a really bad yeah. allergy attack. Because you're so. screaming. Yes. Well, there you was were that screaming too. at a game. Yeah, I was at a basket or a football game yesterday, and there was a lot of screaming and also allergies and combo effort there. It's you know, more fun to say it was just the screaming. But yeah. Anyway. yeah, regardless, yeah. my voice may give out and I'd like to yeah. get through the podcast. So the the there was not much with the task force, no. uh, except wrestlers saying we you're being protected by the FBI. And uh, by the way, the FBI didn't pick up that the Maggie Tolliver, Maddie Tolliver and um, and what was the name of the guy? Um, yeah, uh, are not the same. Birdie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They I didn't mean, pick you... up on that. They, uh, I mean, they were able they to get... drag Ilya in under the nose yeah. of these FBI agents. Like, and, these I mean, I guess if good. they have a garage, but I mean, yeah. Okay. It, who in I mean, DC in that area is going to have a garage? They probably do. The, some of those biz, uh, buildings I do don't... have, although Washington was built on a swamp. Garages are not very common there. Yeah. I would think it'd be very much like, New York and well, New York, all the buildings have garages underneath. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah. I thought there was mostly well, okay, like L.A. or Boston or what have you, where where you have a lot of street parking, a lot of people parking in the streets. Yeah, well, but I mean, obviously they didn't walk him in there. Like, yeah, he's drunk. Um, so Russ was saying that she's being protected by the FBI. Didn't really go very far with me because. Sorry, Russ, you've got a, a very high opinion of him, but as of right now, we do not. <laughs> because yeah. you missed a major, major thing right under everybody's nose. Yeah, because, I mean, it wasn't like, oh my god, the woman is like a a, a copy of, of of Katarina. No, it is not. She's not. No. Or, or it was the similar, lady. similar hair, similar age, similar ethnicity. That's where it stopped. Yeah. I, you know what, I think, I thought that the, the, uh, two actresses that played, uh, the thief and the, the young woman trying to escape her psycho ex, I thought mm-hmm. they looked more similar. I mean, yes, they, like, they did. But even in the pictures of, of the files, there were some that were very dissimilar and, and 
certainly the ones for for Maddie Tolliver, yeah, didn't quite get there. But so the FBI, sorry, wrestler, no, no, not very safe. Um, there was nothing else with Cooper or with anybody else. Yeah, I mean, for for Park being a new character that we're supposed to be getting to know, we've got nothing on her this yeah. time. She's it's like, like, oh, whoops. That's what Red does. Yep, that's what Red does. You just got it. <laughs> you didn't um, get that before when you were complaining he, about it two, you know, two episodes ago? Yeah, Guess you forgot. That's why. Now you got it. Um, Red and... Well, I mean, that restaurant in New York, there was a restaurant where you dine in the dark. I always thought, that's going to be great the day that the rats start to <gasps> roll in the restaurant. Yeah, there was a, a restaurant in New York that people ate in the dark. I don't think it lasted long. It was a fad thing. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a fascinating thought, and that owl was gorgeous. I have no idea if it, I mean, I, I can't imagine it really was a, you know, Just probably bird. a snowy white. Yeah, but still, owl I mean, gorgeous bird. Yeah. Thank you for saving it, Red. Good job. <laughs> and yeah. also shame on everybody for wanting to eat the pro- the protected bird. Good heavens. <laughs> yep. I I was extremely happy that he did, and I would have. And I actually felt a little like Liz. Uh, hello, uh, this is more important. This is an owl. You can, you know, you you shouldn't do well, those things. I I think yeah. I mean, Liz, Liz wasn't. She was pretty hyper focused on on her job there, obviously, because she thought Agnes was in danger and all, which she was, but for a different reason. But you know, let's let's not let them eat the protected owl. That's just yeah, seems we, like good common sense there. Don't eat protected animals, folks. Yeah, it's like as Red said, there are cows galore and yeah, rabbits, rabbits everywhere. A lot of animals that are not protected. That it's fine. Eat them. Yeah, you can yeah. spruce them up. That's part of being an yeah. epic chef. Spruce it up. Yep. Yeah. In fact, there is a lot of, of species uh, polluting the, the rivers and getting the, the and, and lakes and eating every native thing, like carps. That's a good one to eat. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what he was talking about with, with um, the cows. He's like, they're everywhere. Come on, eat those. It's, a good, it's yeah. actually good for the environment. I mean, that's that's what the natural course of things is. You have yeah, eat a lot, eat things that are there are a lot of them. Like, well, you have a predator, and it goes after the prey, and so the prey doesn't take over and overeat the foliage. I mean, that's that's the circle of life. That's yeah. the way it goes. And so, so yeah. yeah, don't eat protected animals. <laughs> yeah, uh, we can briefly touch on how gorgeous that dress that Liz was wearing oh was. God. You know, sometimes I feel like I don't know why they do it. It just seems to be the way that they do it. They, Every season, she's in a lovely dress, except well, for season well, I was five. Say, sometimes they, the dresses just don't. It's not that they don't flatter her. It's I don't know. She's very pretty. Megan is very very pretty, and I feel like they could flatter her. The more. ones in season five were not that beautiful. I don't even remember which. That one they she wanted to get at the party that was kind of floating. It was okay. It was a nice dress, but it didn't flatter her as much as this one this one was or gorgeous. the red one that she was wearing yeah this one is to me has been by far the most gorgeous dress that she's worn yeah i thought it was beautiful i agree so kudos as costuming comparison department. to the rock thing that that um that blanc katarina was wearing oh god i saw that <laughs> It was like a, it was like the cloak of invisibility. She stood in that room and you couldn't see her. Oh my! Maybe that's what she was going for. Who knows? Whoa! Yeah. <sighs> Not, yeah. I don't know what that was about. I generally don't comment on clothes on the character, but those two things caught my attention because one was so beautiful and the other one was not so. And it may Even, have been intentional. I mean, a lot of times. Yeah. The costuming department, the makeup department. Because I've seen pictures of the actress that plays Katarina. She's gorgeous. And they had had her dressed beautifully in the previous episodes. Well, she's I mean, those culottes she was wearing before were gorgeous. Well, what I was trying to say was that I've seen pictures of her outside of the show. And the makeup department has her very hardened. Hardened. And, I mean, she I don't think she looks very pretty in it. But I've seen her outside. I'm like, oh, she is. She's really pretty. And so yes. it's, it's an intentional hardening of her features. It's the, and so they're doing it for a reason. And so yeah. I, I do the think ma- that... The, the, I, the, it's, very, it's very what you're saying. 
the the lipstick color very yeah. obvious yeah and i think they deepen her eyes with you mm-hmm. know with makeup and such it just it, it's a very intentional thing and there are little things that they do and this is why they're the professionals they do to encourage sub- subconscious thought you know mm-hmm. with the yeah she's a hard woman yeah i i i yeah i know and, and but it's an interesting thing that they have chosen to go for a a, a piece of clothing that basically looked like that rug the rocks in the world i i'm still trying to i'm sure that there is a reason for it maybe it was the rug they were rolling up her uh the the woman she took the identity from maybe oh, she took the rug and made a shirt from it or a dress or whatever <laughs> yeah so Souvenir. That, that was my my flight of fancy for today guys um anyway so moving on to the the meat moving of it on uh red um i i that some people were saying that 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 woman thief was the same as as the one with Grace and Blaze, but I don't think it was. Uh, the actress seemed different to me. Hmm? Anna Anna Cartwright. She was a thief too in Grace and Blaze, but I don't think the actress is the same. So I don't think it's a, is the same character. I'd have to go back and look. Um, I don't believe she was in Grace and Blaze. No, no. I mean, the face was different. She, I, I, I didn't look up the actresses just because it, to me they look so different that they're mm-hmm. not. They uh-huh. don't even. Um, didn't even. They wasn't even on my radar. Yeah. No, they were not there. Um, so that I mean, that mostly what I what I got is is Red was you know wanting that, um, but there wasn't much for him to do except be frantic, which takes us to the meat of the episode. Oh my gosh. Okay. So like I said, I watched it the first time through and I'm just sitting there going, oh my gosh, I don't know which way's up. Did they just destroy everything? Does anything make sense? And I knew it was going to take several rewatches. And then (laughs) while trying to do it on my television, which is not the easiest thing in the world, as we discussed earlier, I... I went through and I had to write down, and you guys should see my notes this week. I look so <laughs> obsessive over this. There, I have just blocks of dialogue because mm-hmm. the kudos. I, and Tessa, you looked up the writers. It was Taylor and yes. who else? It was um, Sean Hennon and Taylor Martin. It's... And, uh, sh- Hats yeah, sure. off, you two, because, I mean, if, if this ever gets back to you in any way, major hats off uh, to you and to anybody else that worked on this episode, because I, as much as I feel like it's already very dense with information and mythology, I can only imagine what it's going to be when we finally get pieces of the puzzle that we still don't have. Mm-hmm. But just the... It was amazing. I love, I love cleverly written dialogue. And the writing room for The Blacklist has always been very good about doing exactly what Red does. And which makes sense because they're very good at writing Red. Mm-hmm. Where they present something to you and shape it in such a way that it leads you down a path. And so when you say... Well, she did this. You're thinking, oh, Katarina. Well, is it Katarina or is it someone else? What are we doing here? Why have we not seen this face? And so, especially with all of this, because I've been so hesitant to believe that that blonde cat is actually, you know, the the Lottie Verbanks Katarina. Mm-hmm. For Beaks. Liz's mother. Let's just uh, call her mother. Liz's yes. Um, the every time that they refuse to use dialogue that would make sense if she were actually Katarina, my brain keys in. And Mm -hmm. this was just saturated with it. She never referred... I mean, she's sitting there while while Ilya's going through, and it's like she had no clue... Maybe not no clue what the plan was, but she didn't know what the plan was. Well, remind me. It's a manipulation tactic. It's just... Everything about it screamed that she had pieces of the puzzle. She was trying to fill it in. But she, if she can't possibly be Katarina. Not not the Katarina we know. No. With well, the lack of is... information that, that she had. And, and this, is, this is very... Um, 
this is very interesting because you were you were um the the way they writing this and i i wanted to get this this dialogue because it is very interesting um they they at one point Ilya is narrating what he's what he is seeing and doing and he says um I hate when they do this he leaked at his daughter that you were staying at the inn and that you carry sensitive intel they must be the last chance to catch the infamous Russian trader Katerina Rostova. And there's also a pause between it, you know, like they had to specify. It just, yeah. That, it, it, so it's like you, his daughter, that's what Dom leaked, that his daughter was going to be there, but then he puts that pause and says that you were going to be there, and it's just brilliant. It's yes, there was so much there. And I, I think I mean it's possible that this woman is Katerina's sister and that she is I Dom's a, daughter. I have a theory. But but she I don't think she's Katerina. No. I don't I mean I I am not a hundred percent because she's a blacklist, so I'm gonna put it at ninety five ninety nine point five. Yeah. And Same. say that she is not, but I'm going to I'm going to give you my theory and see what you think about it. I think that this woman is Katerina Rostova. She is the original Katerina Rostova, and she's a redhead. She was a redhead originally. I think this is the reason why Liz's mother became a redhead in that identity of Katerina Rostova. I don't think that this woman was a double for Liz's mother. I think Liz's mother was a double for her. They were using an agent that was known as Katerina Rostova because that was her name and made her into another. And the fact that she already had the same name because she had Mary Rostov made it so much easier. So she became a redhead because if you think about that picture that her mother had that said was of her child, the only picture of her daughter, that woman had red, had dark hair. So it is very likely that Katerina, the identity Katerina Rostova for Liz's mother was a redhead and she changed it when she had other names. So what do you think? Uh, possibly. I mean, we saw she had light, uh, not, not red, but kind of a dark blonde, light brown hair in the one where her face is washed out. Mm -hmm. Red reacted to Liz's blonde hair very dramatically. Uh, and so, I mean, there, there's something going on with the hair color there. That That's a possibility. I mean, I keep going back to season two where Liz talked to the, the uh, CIA officers. Amalgamation of several mm -hmm. agents. Exactly, exactly. And so I, I think that whether Blonde Cat is a you know, uh, double for the cat we know or vice versa, which it makes sense that that maybe Lottie's cat would be, Liz's mother would be a double for her because she said, I can't use my name. Yeah. And also that 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 Liz is has dark hair. Well, you know, that was a little weird. That can come down. Um, I mean, that it can could, come but but it was a it, hair has been very specific. There is also another clue um, that comes, um, and I just lost it, but I will get it back eventually. Um, let's talk about that memory, the process that they did, and what they did with it, because it was absolutely brilliant writing. Oh, yes. First, they use so many words and so many phrases similar to Dr. Orchard. Mm -hmm. Like, you won't get it if he's dead. Um, I, I got to give him something. and All this, like, just relax and focus on that image of yourself. It was so nice when they do those those words that go back. The callbacks. To, mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, very nice. Well, 
you know, as much as I complain sometimes about pieces of the writing that frustrate me, because that, that's obviously one of my focuses, because that's what I love to do. And so I hyper-focus in on, on the writing and the details there. But episodes like this are the reason why I, I have such faith in the talent of this team. Because they come out with stuff like this. And when it counts... You may have episodes that's like, oh my gosh, I was not a fan of this episode. What were they thinking? But then they come out with stuff like this. And it's like the mythology, the, the core of this show. Mm-hmm. The way that they're able to navigate that and to, to push that forward and present that to us mm-hmm. is fantastic. Yeah. They, they well- have a truly talented writing team. And the, the, the way they did this and the way they confused is first, it's a very nice lesson for when your grammar teacher was making sure that your writing was precise and there weren't so many pronouns in it. He and he and she and her and his and they don't tell you anything. And it can get very confusing. Well, in are you seeing a lot of she and he and they? Then you know you're being hoodwinked. The second thing is what what Ilya remembered but didn't say out loud, they couldn't see. Like Dr. Orchin couldn't see what Liz was remembering if Liz didn't talk about it. You know, they don't see into her mind. They don't have something connected to her mind that they can see the images she's seeing. So there were times in which Ilya was saying this, the things, like he was mouthing the words, so you know that he was telling them, uh, you know, out loud. And I thought it was brilliant. And the fact that they used certain images from Rasput mm-hmm. and then others were not. And the way that they, the way that they lined up, Blonde Cat and Lottie from Rasput, was so nice because it was... It it could be read as she was finishing it, but then if you separate it and you take a step back, she's not. She's asking about it. It's mm-hmm. we're getting something that's not actually happening there. And so Ilya was it's oh god, it was just amazing. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. Uh Ilya was watching this, but just as you just mentioned, they can't see this. It's just the the whole setup of the way they clipped back and forth. Honestly, just I, I'm there's just so, so many impressed. planes. <laughs> there is there is a plane where where the things are happening. There is a plane which Katerina and Blondcat and Ily and a, and and older older Ilya and and older Blondcat are in are inserting themselves in there, but she's not really there, so she doesn't know what she's saying. He's imagining that she's there sitting down or being next to his or in the car outside. But he's not seeing this because his younger self is inside the car talking with Dom. Right. So there, there's so many layers of things happening. And then the things that he remember that none of them can see. And the things that he is mouthing at the same time that he's saying it in, in the past that they can't tell. The, the other thing that I wanted to mention about this is that we're giving very, very subtle clues in this. For example, Ilya says, I didn't know you had taken a new husband. That means that I thought these guys were married, which is something that I've been getting a feel for. I don't know if it was a real marriage, a cover marriage or what, but I had a feeling that they were involved because he's... He's, she seems to really love him and be pain and at the same time angry at him. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it was maybe it was a honey trap. We, we've discussed that before that it seemed like almost like he had honey trapped her. You know, mm-hmm. honey trap, the honey trap. Yeah, goodness, so many honey traps. Love it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I have that in my notes as well. Taking a new husband is such a strange phrase, mm-hmm. and he seems not that so, I was angry about it. Well, he but seems I didn't know so, it irked over it and Dom yes. seems so irked that he didn't know how could I have known I mean they, they were just back and forth on that and it was it was great and the one thing we don't know because they tell us when they start that session it's interesting they tell us we're going back to 1991 when you learned that Katerina was alive um, 
but then when we go back and we go into that set up that dom arrange we don't know what year is this it's true this could be five years later three years later two years later we have no clue Ilya has uh has trimmed hair and also darker hair well uh yeah a little bit darker but he also mm -hmm. cut it very short yeah and so i mean obviously there's been passing of time and so it's and this is past october 1991 because they already know about the plan so this may be 1992 fast forward 95 we don't mm -hmm. know what this is it definitely and listed on the the you know <laughs> on the side of the mental uh you know, Excel sheet of is he, is she, isn't she, uh, is why on earth, if she were really Katerina Rostova, she would know the plan. She, one, she would know the plan. Two, of all the things we do know, Katerina was it, she was trying to protect Liz. So if, Liz being Masha being in danger. Why wouldn't they have just gone to her? Like, why all of this? Why the charade? Why would they have not found a different path? None of that makes sense. And it doesn't make sense that Dom would have chosen his granddaughter, chosen to protect his granddaughter by killing her mother. Like, yeah. just none of that would make sense. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would, I would see something like that happening. Let's say that. You know, the, the the mother went to, totally insane. He was advancing towards a, the child with a knife. Yes, Well, exactly. maybe then you shoot the mother or, you know, try not to kill her. She probably needs to go into a loony bin, not, you know, not exactly. jail. But, well, but, and, and then you also, also, you also have the whole bit, again, back to the, the, uh, uh, the, the husband, uh, Peter, I think was mm -hmm. his name. We've seen way too much of Katarina to know that she just doesn't fall head over heels for a guy, marry him, and then years later be like, but I loved him, and you killed him. Like, that's just not the Katarina we've known. Yes, no. she loves people, but she's not exactly good at love. It's like, that, that's just not the woman that we've gotten to know through mm -mm. the various flashbacks. As soon as she started in on that, I'm going... All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was also something that Dom said in when uh, they were at the at the, his house preparing for for Katerina's and for Blancat on the man. There was I did what I did to protect my own, but his own is Katerina and mm -hmm. Masha, not just Masha. So he just threw this woman uh, uh, out the, the uh, you know threw her under the train. In order to save his own. And yep. the, the truth is like the only thing that is happening here is that Ilya, Dom, and Red are protecting one woman. Which is Katerina. And that is Katerina. Yes. Agreed. And, yeah, and I, I think that at this point, there is still the, the, the they're, they're throwing clues. To me, they're red herrings, but I cannot ignore them. That Red is, is one of, of Liz's parents. Is either Raymond Reddington because now we don't have Ilya, so we are we're down to Red is Raymond Reddington or Red is Katerina. No, I don't particularly believe in the Katerina theory. Oh, no. no, I don't. Um, wasn't it interesting though? Because at the beginning of of the memory, when we're having the flashbacks to uh, to Rosfit, and they're talking about Reddington being dead, someone taking, you know, Reddington's persona, getting the money. Oh, it didn't work out as you thought it would. Okay, cool. Moving on from that. And then suddenly they're in the car however many years later. And Ilya's talking about that they need to tell Reddington. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine with just the two of them who were both in on the whole plan. That would be him. It would they, they would upset him. You need, we need to tell him. Yeah, well, yeah. we don't need to tell him. They, it was very specific. Whenever they use, there are three different types. They use he or she. They use full names. Don't trust it. <laughs> if it's Tom mm -hmm. Keen, if it's Katerina Rostova, just don't. If it's Raymond, Raymond Reddington, you, don't trust it. If it's the full name there, someone that should be just calling them by their normal everyday yeah, name. Yeah, the way they refer to them normally. Yes. Yeah. And, and there was... 
that was just that was fascinating to me for him. Well, did you notice something else that he said? It's not very easy to understand. And on this TV, we thought the Amazon was extremely painful. But the actual dialogue is, I thought that they were, I thought that they were, that she was dead. And then he said, um, I thought they were dead. They were dead. So this, 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 if, if that's what he well, said. Where was very, this? Where was this, this is the very beginning when he says, let me go, t- go back to the, the place where, to, um, there you go. Do you remember what happened? Um, I, can you tell me what you see? I see her with me. How do you feel relieved? I thought she was gone. And then we hear a little piece of, I went into the ocean to end my life. And then they said, do you remember what happened that night? And then she said, Ilya in present time says, she made contact at the embassy. And then we go back to young Ilya. The the world thinks you're dead. And then Ilya says, present day Ilya, I thought they were dead. They. So who's going to be they? It has to be Reddington. So at that time, what it seems is like everybody thought that Red, Red, Reddington was dead. And then after a while, then we're going to another line that a lot of people, I'm seeing it in social media, I'm seeing it in Reddit, and I'm seeing it in Tumblr. People are getting wrong. Ilya says, we devise a plan to steal the money used to frame Reddington and disappear. Then Kov, Kovic says, but the plan, it didn't work. It's not Ilya saying the plan didn't work. It's the guy. And then Ilya said, not like we thought. Mm -hmm. No. Why? So to me, that leaves one thing. It didn't work the way they thought because Reddington wasn't dead. They didn't need to have somebody uh, become Reddington because they had Reddington. And Uh, Reddington was now a fugitive, so he needed the money just as much as, as Katerina and Ilya. So I do wonder of- if our original Red, especially if it's the Reddington we know, if he, if the reason those bones come back as Reddington, if he faked his own death. And yeah. that's why it's in there as Raymond Reddington. But going back to Is Blonde Cat, the Katarina we know, I mean, she would know all of this. She would know who went under the knife to become Raymond Reddington if it weren't Ilya. And it, there would be no reason for her to ask that. There was a line early on. Um, let's see, I'm looking for it here. So uh, he said, uh, it's, it's when they... Who did it involve? Hang on. Uh, well, there was that too. But she's talking to, uh, to Birdie at the beginning. He says he'll get Ilya talking about uh, Skovic. She says he'll get Ilya to talk, and when he does, we'll have the intel we need. And then promptly goes in, and they start asking about the plan. The plan. They don't have that information. That's not something she has. She's not Katarina Rostova. She doesn't know anything that happened between the time where Katarina appeared to be dead, and Dom asked her to do something, and she just... You know, got that information for her. That's all she knows. It's that there is there, there is this blank in her life. And also, there have been some time that she just, which goes into, I think that Dom also asked her to be Katerina, I, portray Katerina, and do all that crazy things at the, at the ferry station. Because... If you fake your death, you're not going to go out to the ferry station looking like yourself, red hair and all, considering that there's only like 2% of humanity that has red hair, and looking like Katerina because what, hair dye was too expensive? Yeah. You know? For, for a for covert a... operative. Yeah. For an intelligence operative. No. Yeah. I mean, of course, that'd be the first thing that she would do was dye her hair, cut it, do something different. Uh, she would change her entire appearance. And it was the 80s. I mean, come on. Turn on the Americans. You see how often Carrie Russell's character changes her appearance. And I'm how sure well. that they... And Katerina would not have had a locker full of wigs and and dresses. Basically like Vanessa Cruz little yes. setup with the, the, the whole dresses and, 
and wigs she, and stuff. She would have a place like Tom did in season one, a place to go to that had, you know, all, all the stuff she needed. Mm-hmm. And so she might have had stuff hidden away in other places, in her own home, anywhere, but she would have had a safe house. Cash. I mean, that's, yeah, that's she just a no-brainer. Have all of that. It's, I mean, that that's like ABC for any operative, and you do not not would not let anybody else know because you never know who you could trust. Exactly. So you would have always had passports that you that you needed that you could have, cash that you could access. That that's it. Just doesn't make any sense to me. So I think that that Dom asked her to impersonate Katerina a couple of times in Prague, in the ferry station, to, to do a trail that led away from Katerina. So where Katerina was, Katerina had to have been in the United States. Not away, not in Prague, not in the ferry station. And uh, Because they no. got her out. I mean, that's, yeah, I, I agree. I think that this woman, whatever her real name is, whether it is Katerina, whether it's something else. I think it is Katerina. It, it may be. I, and, I, you know, I don't really have a strong opinion either way. I, I don't really, I don't want to say I don't care, because I do mm-hmm. care who she is. But it goes back to names don't mean a whole lot here. Yeah. <laughs> it's their operatives. Names are switched out, you know. Yeah. So, it's so... all... Um, it, this is, this is, um, it, it's such a fascinating way. And the, the, the thing that I just want everybody to think about it, all our, our listeners, is to think about, if you have the time, go back and go to Liz's um, memory recall and take a look again at those scenes. Now that you've seen so many memory manipulation and extractions and see what you get from it now that you have a bit more under your belt in terms of what is done and, and what can people see. And it's a, it's a setting up of the world. And that's, they, they've set the parameters of this world that they're working in. And with each time we see it, it, it defines those parameters a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it, it seems fair to me. I mean, do you think Ilya is dead or semi-dead? We still got one episode with him, but it doesn't mean that he's alive or conscious. Or What do you mean? Do you, do you mean, do I think he, he will survive it? He didn't seem very good after the last, uh, when Katarina well, was yelling at him. Uh I mean, they, they seem to have saved him. Um, I don't think... I think he actually came out, didn't he? And said that he mm-hmm. stabilized him. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I... Whether he... I, I said for a while that I didn't think that he was going to survive it. I hope he does. I love Ilya. Yeah. I, I've been fond of Ilya since Rosfit. You know, whoever he was, I just suddenly was very, very fond of the man. Mm-hmm. And even with him as older Ilya, I just... For heaven's sakes, give Red someone he can trust that he's known most of his life. That's yeah. Yeah, I, I hope it, he survives. I don't have a whole lot of faith that he will, though. No, I mean um, the 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 interesting things in, in all this too, um, which is not the memory thing, but is in that last scene when Liz confronts uh, Blonde Cat and. It is very funny how they do it because they had her go into like, yeah, but Katerina Rostova, and she's like, I can't explain. And and Liz keeps going, you know, like because she doesn't, she still doesn't get that you have to not give people too much information. She still doesn't get it. So she gets emotional. It's she's done yeah. that the entire round of it tom did it even the best operative on you know in the series supposedly even red got hoodwinked with emotions yeah i mean they they all do it it's it's because it's just too close she might be able to manipulate someone that it's not an emotionally compromised situation emotionally charged situation but when it's her mother her father her family she's yeah Sorry, (laughs) Liz is going to go. So that Liz believes that she's Katerina Rostova, her mother, but the audience now have a pretty good sense that she is not Katerina Rostova, 
her mother, although she may be a Katerina Rostova, and then she goes and tells her, and Katerina is like, I don't know how I'm going to get out of there. And then you see her eyes after Liz says, uh, you shot your father and you put your granddaughter in, in, uh, in danger. And they do this frame to Katerina saying, ah, that's what you think I am. Exactly. It's like the bell and whistle goes off and she's like, oh, this is my way out. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to convince you I'm your mother because you're already there. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's uh, I, I think it was a masterful episode. Um, the 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 pronouns are they use the pronouns in in the entire thing since they introduce this woman in the streets in Paris has been out, outstanding because and the use of the names I kept thinking why do they repeat names It's like there is like fifteen Katrinas there is like eleven Elizabeth there is an ungodly number of Christophers and Christian Toms. and Nicholas and all these names. We have another associated. Tom, or is it Tommy? They're, but still, they're like yeah, there are a number of them. So whenever I see somebody in the blacklist that has a name that is not unique, I know they're not the real person. That's not their name. Yeah. So it it was really good to see that that it came to something because this woman is Ekaterina Rostova, but that you know. Does it mean that she's the only one? Now, one thing that 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 was in, intriguing to me is that we seem to have a close relationship from the three men to each one of the women. Dom has a relationship with Ilya and a relationship with Red. The same is true for Dom, for uh, Ilya. He has a relationship with Red, a relationship with with Blonde Cat, and a relationship with with Red and a relationship with Katerina that we see in the past. And the same is for Red. What doesn't seem to be is a relationship between Blonde Cat and Katerina and Liz's mother. I don't see that they actually may have met one another or may have had a relationship because she doesn't seem to have known much about it. She certainly doesn't know much about the other relationships. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, I agree with that. And I thought about Ilya, and I don't know what you think about this. I thought about Ilya. Uh, remember that Ilya Surkov, Brian Osterman, he recruited all the other agents, telling them that they were working for the CIA, which they were, but they didn't know because he was working really. The idea was that the CIA could cut them all off if needed and not acknowledge that they were working for them because Osterman recruited oh, them Osterman. as as Tobias Ruther as a CIA when they were not really officially working for the CIA. And I thought about if, if Ilya Surkov is Ilias did the same thing. If he recruited this blonde cat telling her that she was working for the KGB, but she really was never working for the KGB. And because Ilias is a KGB agent without any accent, it just doesn't sound right to me. I mean, they don't... And going over to the train station and picking up... A, I mean, if it was the Cold War, they would have a 15 FBI agents behind them. Well, it's interesting because he... Did have an act? Did he have an accent in Ross in uh, nope. Rossfit? He no. did this time when he was talking to Dom. They both had accents. Yeah, and Dom accent is getting. The more they tell the story, the more the accent gets thick and thick. <laughs> <laughs> the more Russian he becomes. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how you go, you know, forward in time and the back in time, and he gets more Russian accent as he goes by. Funny because by then he had been out of Russia for so long. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I have some family friends that are from Romania, and they've been here for, oh, good heavens, I don't know, 40 years, maybe more, and they both have very thick accents that are still very, I yeah. mean, obviously you not have it, someone you have that lived there. You put it yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, you may have a thicker accent when you're excited also, or I was going to say, they're also not emotion. covert operatives that are used to yeah. switching in and out of various accents. But I noticed that Dom... Put an accent for Liz. Uh, as soon as she found out what she is, he had he started with a Russian accent. Um, then 
Dom had more action as a strap in Rasmus Tail in the young years, and then in this one it was very thick. So to me, that's like, um, yeah, they're just there's something going on too with 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 Ilya being KGB that it's not jiving well with me. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting. And so I, I like that. I like that idea of him telling her that she's working for the KGB and perhaps not even being KGB. Mm-hmm. Maybe he was with the Cabal. Maybe he was with the Americans. Who knows? I think he was CIA and he just did a false flag operation to make and recruit Katerina Blancat to make her think that she was KGB. There is something in this that smells of a charade that, you know, with the accents, not to mention that if Don were really KGB and he had been investigated as being the famous Oleander, which, by the way, that's like a man code named Rose, um, weird, um, then why are his prints not in the system? He's like a ghost. It's, nobody knew the wrestler couldn't know didn't know who he was had the russians not tell him that's katerina's father wrestler would have been stumped a man who has a dossier from the cia being investigated Tom as was possible. even having trouble following it i mean he had pieces of the information before he died but he never yes. got to dom nope not that we he know of did. not yeah. that we know of that that seems to me to be uh just like tom King's prints and background. That's a professional scrub job because no matter what, how many, the, the man had the DNA in the crime scene. He was a suspect in this and that. And then he got a job as a school teacher. That to me is a scrub job. Yeah. There was so and I just disagree that, with how the scrub job happened. <laughs> yeah, we disagree on how, but we know that yeah. it did. It had to have. I mean, because. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, the same thing happened with uh, with Jolene. Um, what yeah. was her, her real name? Or supposed Lucy her real Brooks. name? Lucy Brooks. Thank you. I mean, because Liz made the comment in season one, how does someone like that become a substitute teacher? And Tom's like, who knows, babe? <laughs> um, but, you know, she was scrubbed too. And she yeah. worked for Berlin. Uh, I, I think that she, I think that was the, the end all, that she worked for Berlin rather than uh, working directly for St. Regis. Yes. Uh, Lucy Brooks? Yeah. Yeah, she never worked for St. Regis. There's no yeah. connection with St. Regis. She was just so, a, an operator. So I I think that there are probably in this world that's been set up groups that are capable of scrubbing. I and mean, because we've seen too many situations like that. And so I don't think it requires a CIA. Not, not working yeah. for the CIA, but... Uh, you've got contacts with them. You have connections here, there, and everywhere. I mean, there there are just too many moments, too many people mm-hmm. in here that have become someone new, and that their entire background is just gone. Yeah. Um. So this episode, in general, it, it felt really good, and it was fun. I, I was. I mean, I. I I'm. I'm not really like that happy with that with that scene with the restaurant because in my view it just took a lot of time. I would I mean not that I didn't enjoy it I I did enjoy it but I would have liked to have had a bit more. Um, I think that's a pacing thing. I think yeah. they're just trying to. I I mean I've been saying for a while I think they're at the end and they're trying to stretch it out and yeah. Both give us information and get it Not to the end. Yeah, yeah, because for some reason they went with 22 episodes, but well, it's what they decided, and what, so now they're stretching. What is interesting to me is that we have enough episodes to get to the first big block of numbers, which is to about 130 if we get season 8. And let's say that we get a few missing here and there, because I suspect there's going to be uh, one of these episodes is definitely going to be wrestlers back and it's i i imagine it's going to be called detroit or something like that or and you know Tiny reckoning market. whatever and there's going to be something and that's not going to probably not going to have a number um it might it might have a number and that has to do like that's how it tied in but there's interesting to me that they have seemed to have planned it so that the in with eight seasons they basically feel the numbers i I hope that they're not trying to stretch it into eight. 
not because I wish anybody to lose their job and have to go on the horrific hunt of trying to find a new show to be on, but just because I, they have not proven that they have the story to keep going a whole nother ep- in a whole nother 22 episode season. I didn't well, think they I had only... it for this one, and there have been a lot of moments where I still feel that way nearly halfway yeah. through the season. The, well, they're still providing fantastic, fantastic episodes like this. They have others that it's just like, well, we got nothing from this. And that's that's part of being a serial or a uh, procedural mm-hmm. show. You have stuff that doesn't necessarily tie in. But they're also not of the caliber of... The trickle has been stretched yeah, a little too thin? Just a little too thin. And it's, it's not a bash at the writers. It's just they're at the end. And I think yeah. they're running out of stuff I, to I, use. Do think that they do have enough to to go for? I mean, they could go for another year. Uh, I I hope I had. I do hope, and I don't hope for the same time because I enjoy the the show. Yeah. Um, but I also prefer a well written, well paced, uh, shorter seasons than that. But we'll see what we get. At the, at any rate, um, I, I just wanted to say with the numbers. Um, that is very interesting what is happening. We're getting a block and then one off, a block and one or two off. And and for those of you who have followed my my adventures in deciphering the code, I know what the code is. Um, I have made some significant advances in it. And I it's just incredibly slow and it requires high concentration to get you know each one of the sections but i would not be surprised if we start to get things really fast and furious now i would love that but i i think if we do we're not going to have another season so i of course i said that i said that last year and i was yeah so i I disagree (laughs) there um let me ask you something because it's been a long time since I've asked you, and and by the last time I asked you, you were still believing that Red was Ilya, and that this woman may have been Katerina. What do you think about Carlarina now? I still disagree with Carlarina with everything I have in me. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I actually had someone ask me the other day if I'd hopped on that bandwagon. I was like, no, no, not yet. <laughs> not <Hey>. there. <laughs> I'm seeing slowly people turn around in the, in the expected ways. I had some people say, well, I guess you were right. It was an Ilya. And yeah, I guess he was right. This woman is not Liz's mother. Um, so, and, and I've seen also people say, yeah, it seems like you're right. And Red, it really is Raymond Reddington. Um, so I'm seeing people turn around. Eventually, you'll be my in my lane. I know that. Hey, you know that if you're right, I will be the first person to say it. You know, if it comes out yeah. and they're like, "Look, there's Carla. She's actually Katerina," I'll be like, oh, "Well, there's Tessa. <laughs> Tessa called it. Tessa called it years ago." Yeah. How long have you had that theory? Do you know? I What's... I got it in late 2015, and and to be fair. I did not was I was not the first person who came up with it. It was a user. Um, it was in the old Wall Street Journal, and it it was kind of one of those things that people throw at the wall to see what happens. Um, she's she's in Tumblr, and I think she might be in Reddit. I don't know. Uh, her name is Tatiana. Username is I think it's Tatiana Reddington. Oh, I remember her. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and she just said, "What if?" What if Carla Reddington were were uh, Katerina? And I just said, you know what? Oh, interesting idea, but I don't think so. And then when I started analyzing, I got Tumblr. It was 2015. <laughs> then you fell down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, and then I just looked at it, and I and I knew, and I, you know, for those of of you who who do not know me uh, from that time, I I actually had a bunch of papers. I didn't even have a big whiteboard, but I put a lot of papers and I wrote down in big letters all those phrases that had to be true. And I just plastered them into a wall and I just sat there and looked at them for hours. I just knew and that's then Solomon it hit me and the 
places just fell into place and ever since I've been in the rabbit hole. That was before we started the podcast, so I did yes. not have the absolute pleasure of seeing this wall. I wish I had. <laughs> yeah, it's long gone, but I, I made now uh, electronic versions of it. Eh, yeah, but yeah. that theory, I haven't got off. I mean, I think I got off the bandwagon for a little bit, and then I said, no, this has to be like this. Um, and it's and it's very interesting because at some point I thought that she may have been the original one or they have been an original one but you know we'll see when it goes there all I know it's is a rabbit hole yep I'm just enlarging it because I know there'll be more people in it <laughs> all right well do we have anything else not really I mean it was a fantastic episode really oh, fantastic so good so good and even better once I actually went down and, and wrote down the dialogue because mm-hmm. I'm one of those people I'm not an auditory person I, I'm very visual I'm very hands on I'm at my best when I'm able to jot things down and think about them and write them and reposition them and that sort mm-hmm. of thing and so that's just because I was having on my television I actually when I'm watching normal TV I have subtitles up just mm-hmm. because it's it helps me. But it, when you pause it on Amazon, when you pause it, the subtitles stay. It does not do that with Uverse. <laughs> and so I would pause it, and then I'd have to back it up 10 seconds, and then listen to it yeah. again, and then back it up. And then let me, let me, I've got to send you the link to the script that I use, that they have the scripts from the CC cash Oh, uh, I've probably seen it, because every time I tell people that I would love to get my hands on well into the series uh, episode scripts they yeah. send me transcripts and so I think I know exactly what you're talking about yeah. because they have transcripts and those are great I yeah, mean they're, they're fantastic they're a, a good, good but for those you don't have to do and I, I would ride. like if anybody has access to and we'll say permission to share <laughs> Mm-hmm. Because technically, you probably should have permission to share. Um, I I love to see a real script. In, well, scripts into the because most shows will put out the pilot, mm-hmm. but for some reason, they don't put out other episodes. Um, I got my hands on several into series episodes uh, back when the awards came out because there was a, a website that put them out. Basically, anything mm-hmm. that won an award. And, like, there was one into Killing Eve that was, like, one of the episodes from season two. I love that because there's a ton of stuff online to be able to study how to write mm-hmm. a pilot. Okay, that's fantastic. I, you know. Not as good as actually seeing the right one. The, well, well the, I mean, live can, one. that's what I'm saying. You can get a hold of pilots pretty easily. I want to know what happens in episode two. I want to know how to format that. I want to know how that's structured. I want to know where the differences are. I mean, you can watch the show, you can break it down, you can do all of that, but seeing the actual script that they worked off of is 500 times better. So, if anybody ever knows or has a contact that you can get me in contact with where I can get a hold of a Blacklist episode, I would love it. I just haven't been able to find the ability to do that. Someday, maybe. Maybe. So, I I don't have anything else. Do you? I don't. I just, I really did like this episode. I I cannot praise the writing team enough. And probably every other aspect, you know, every other group that works on this show. It just, it was so well done. And I have a feeling that, you know, as we get more information, we'll be slapped upside the face with knowing just how well they did on this episode. Yeah. Yeah, um, and that now from I'm going to now talk about spoilers. So if you're not spoiler, if you don't like spoilers, turn it off now. We're just gonna talk about this and then say goodbye. Um, the did you see in this? Did you get to see the spoilers from uh, next episode? Do you mean the the yeah on uh, next when, week when yeah. Birdie Kong slicks on the head? Yes. Did you see the look on her face? And then she's like gagged and. Uh, I don't think I saw the same one as you because it ended with her getting knocked out. I didn't. Oh no! There was an action TV or something like that that is online. 
Okay. Yeah, I didn't and see she's that like part. gagging at closet. I just, and, but I just saw a blonde cat and a very smug look, and I'm going, "You were not her mother." <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be like, "Hey, don't conquer that hard," you know. But she's just like Liz is like unconscious on the floor, and she's like, "Hey." I know she's she's thrilled, but yeah. It's, yeah, no, I mean she put her through the table. Yep. Or he put her through the table. Yeah. That was a hard conk and another conk on the head. This woman is gonna have like a concussion. Like she's gonna go bananas. Oh, she's yep. she's been hitting the head so often. It's bad. Yeah. That's very bad. So anyway, that's all I got. Yeah, uh, that's about what I've got too. It's great, fantastic episode. Can't so wait for you, the next one. yeah, you can catch us and talk to us on Tumblr, on Twitter, and Facebook. We love to hear from you guys, and you can listen to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And until next time, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.